Here we're going to compare the results between the 18R1 and R2 using the autoconstrained surface command. So in this exercise you can see I've got a number of pieces of geometry with different number of elements within it. If we simply do a window select, hit preview, you can see the results there. A nice flowing surface, a set of surfaces going through the elements. Whereas with the previous release, you can see I didn't get the same result. Uh, the surface was self-intersecting, um, not a good result. And that's down to the um, reordering of the curves now has been improved. You'll see it, this again in this exercise. So, range of components, same number of elements now in each of these. Uh, you can see the twisting surface, not a good result. If I do this in the R2 version, it reorders the curves in a much better way. It gives me a much more satisfactory uh, result. So in this exercise I'm going to pick the edges. So I've got a couple of surfaces here. So if I pick a chain of edges and then a second chain of edges here, hit the preview, you can see this is the default result, whereas that's what I would have got in in the R1 version. If we change some of the settings here and cycle through some of the results. You can see I get a when I get a faceted surface on it, I get a nice flowing surface with the same result. Whereas if I now come in select a tangent solution, you get a nice set of tangent surfaces there. Whereas if I try the same with R1, Parasolid would have failed. So there's a number of improvements there. In addition to this, the autoconstrained surface, if I just put a window around here, you can see surface has been generated and now possible for me to change and put a thickness onto the surface you can have a thickness value or you could cap the ends and just create a solid now with one drive to shape surface if I just come and create a, a surface here so if I pick the drive curve and the shape curves you'll see there we now get a, a faceted surface. So the transition between the rads and the straight edges, look, you'll see uh, those facet lines. Previously, I would have had one single surface like this, which would have made it impossible for me to, to edit. So now if I accept that result, if I come in and say delete some of the faces, if I just pick the chain of edges here, you can see I can delete the the rads, if I pick this single face here, I can remove that as well. I can move the face. So makes it much easier now to modify one drive to shape geometry once it's been created. So fill holes, we've done some changes in this interface. So fill holes now here where a hole splits through multiple faces. If I pick a chain of edges, you can see it fills. Uh, the hole there that, that goes through multiple faces. I can also do that by selecting the actual faces themselves. So if I pick, I'll start by sticking a, a single face, so it just caps over those holes there. If we step backwards and add to that selection, you can see it fills in more holes now, and also the hole going through multiple faces. So I'll add a few more faces to that list. And there you go, look, so it's selected all of those holes that go through multiple faces. In addition to that, this exercise here, I've got quite a few holes in multiple faces throughout the part. This time I'm going to change the element environment and pick the actual solid. You can see straight away it's filled in all of those individual holes, even ones coming through multiple faces. So a good result.